and offer to negotiate and a call on NATO to stop its air campaign. Colonel Muammar Gaddafi addressed NATO states saying it was time to talk. They speak of a ceasefire. We, the Libyans, are the first to welcome a ceasefire. We're the first to accept a ceasefire. But have the Crusaders, the NATO airstrikes, stopped? They haven't stopped. Who can stop them? Libya welcomes the ceasefire and has announced this numerous times and is ready even now. But a ceasefire cannot be from one side. NATO's response was quick and clear. We need to see not words but actions. The regime has announced ceasefire several times before and continued attacking cities and civilians. NATO will continue operations until all attacks and threats against civilians have ceased. That action has now begun. Actions have consequences. A Fox urgent now coming out of Libya. The government there saying a NATO airstrike has killed one of Muammar al-Qaddafi's sons. Libyan leader Muammar al-Qaddafi reportedly has survived a NATO missile strike that killed his youngest son and three grandchildren and possibly wounded friends and relatives who were gathered at a residential compound there in the capital city, Tripoli. Uh, this is brand new video that's coming in, and we will be joined momentarily by our correspondent, our journalist there on the ground, David Lee Miller, and as he becomes available, we'll bring that to you. But right now, what we're learning is that Gaddafi and his wife were in the Tripoli house of his 29-year-old son, Saif al-Al Gaddafi, they survived, he did not. Reportedly, one missile fired at a Na at, by a NATO warplane. This is according to a Libyan spokesperson. All right, and now we have David Lee, who is live there in Libya. David, take it away. Here we go. We heard two loud blasts this evening, Harris, at about 8 o'clock local time. The authorities here said something significant had happened. They did not disclose what that was. Then a few hours later, they took journalists to the home. They did not say whose home it was. They did say that it was a relative of uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Inside, the home had been badly damaged. Uh, the ceiling had collapsed. There was debris everywhere. everywhere. In uh, one room, there was blood on the wall. Uh, you could see in the living room that uh, there was food on the table. There was water on the table. <clears throat> A television set was still running. It seemed abundantly clear that there were probably people in the home at the time of the strike when we did our walkthrough through the home uh, and that uh, people were uh, perhaps having a, an evening meal. And then at a news conference just a short time ago, uh, the Ministry of Information here, the Minister of Information announced that uh, uh, Gaddafi's sixth youngest son, Saif al-Arab, was in fact killed. He was described as a student, a civilian. They uh, say he had no military role whatsoever. They say that uh, his father, Muammar Gaddafi, and uh, his wife were in the home when the attack took place, also killed three of Muammar Gaddafi's uh, grandchildren who were also, again, in that home. As for Muammar Gaddafi, the uh, spokesman for the government here quoting him now, said that he is in good health. That said, his whereabouts at this hour are not known, and uh, Tripoli, as is much of the country now, Harris, is only learning for the very first time that a son of the man they referred to as the leader has died. Uh, earlier, I referenced the fact there was machine gun fire. People here very angry, firing indiscriminately. And just a few minutes ago, uh, outside uh, one of the hotels where Western journalists are staying, uh, someone uh, sprayed a number of rounds of, uh, of machine gun fire that, uh, at least for some of the reporters here, was a little too close for comfort, uh, tempers here starting to, to flare. Harris? Well, David Lee, you hit on the very subject that I was going to ask about, and that is whether or not anybody has actually seen Mumar al-Qaddafi. No, they have not. I saw him once in the uh, month or so that I have been here. And that was uh, when he was meeting with the South African president. He keeps a low profile. Uh, they do not disclose his whereabouts. They do not say where he spends the night. We went to a rally a few weeks ago expecting to see the leader. Instead, we saw his daughter speaking to a crowd of a few thousand. And when he does make a public appearance here, there is no announcement ahead of time to alert the media. It's a last-minute thing. And then uh, he essentially uh, vaporizes. He disappears. Mm -hmm until his next public appearance. One of the things worth mentioning here also, Harris, last night Muammar Gaddafi was on television here. Uh, <clears throat> we're getting word that it was a, a live broadcast. We can't state that for fact. The Libyans are saying it was live. But while he was speaking on Libyan television, that's when uh, NATO did strike a number of facilities here, including the Attorney General's office mm -hmm. and the headquarters for the People's Congress. The Libyans believe 
The Libyans believe those sites were targeted because, <clears throat> excuse me, there was an expectation or belief that Gaddafi was at that location delivering that speech. They said that was not where he was speaking from. He was speaking from a secretive location. But uh, people here in Libya, especially those connected to the government, believe that he is being targeted for assassination by NATO and his whereabouts becoming increasingly secretive. Harris? Yeah, very interesting. He was in that home tonight of his son. He and his wife uh, survived that. Our president, President Obama, has said it is not the Americans' mission, our military's mission, to take out another country's leader. But clearly, NATO coming very close to Muammar al -Qadr coffee tonight. Uh, David Lee Miller, as the news warrants, we will bring you back. Uh, thank you very much for your reporting there, and thank you to the other journalists from Fox News Channel who are with you. We'll check back with you. And back here in the United States, Justice. It's not about agenda. It's not about mobilizing people. It's about dialing for corporate dollars. These two parties have sold the U.S. government and the American people to the highest bidders. 